328 with M badges. <laughs> you heard it first. <laughs> Welcome back to Yev's Builds, and today in this video, we're gonna be installing the Vanos gears and we're gonna be doing the timing on the V10. Simple, dude. If you're taking this motor apart and you don't have the correct tools, and by tools, I mean these timing tools, right? And you made the mistake that I did. Um, it's not too difficult to put them back to place, but I couldn't really do it on my own, and I need special tools to do this, which I, I'm not gonna buy just to stretch the Vanos out a little bit. Thankfully, Troy Giep, the notorious Troy Giep, hooked me up. I sent him my Vanos units. He put them in timing perfectly for me. So they're straight up just ready to be plugged in and set and tuned. So let's set the timing on this baby, finally. So like you've just seen in this B-roll, this one's already done. The main focus of this entire Vanos assembly is that these two bottom bolts are lined up with the Vanos unit uh, Moving holes, right? They're supposed to be parallel to themselves. In theory, let's just say when you're testing out your Vanos right before you torque them, let's just say they're not they're not aligned. You can just move the chain aside, let it hang down a little bit, put them into the cams, and as you can tell, these are solid. They're perfectly straight. If let's say one of them is not straight with these two holes, all it is is that these teeth are simply just not aligned where they're supposed to be. So if these two bolts are just not aligned with those holes, all you could do is when you pull them out, just kind of move it and just try one tooth at a time. Move it up or down just to kind of see until you find that location. Yes, it takes some time and it's annoying and it's tedious, but once you have it perfectly set, you're golden. And once you put them in here, you will already be able to tell that these, all these are just parallel to, to themselves. And it's simple. If you haven't seen my video of how to properly align the camshafts and make them in time and prepared for timing, you can click right here. But the essence of that portion is that when you time these, when everything's at top dead center, as you can see, the harmonic balancer, there's a little, there's a little OT over here, right? OT stands for something in German that simply states top dead center. That's all it is. Put a locking pin through it and you take these timing tools. You see the cams, they have letters on them and numbers. Those numbers are supposed to be facing perfectly up and you could take a wrench, you could put it right over here and you can rotate your cam as long as your piston one is at top dead center. As long as your piston one is at top dead center, you can take your cams and kind of rotate them a little bit here and there until these tools right here, they sit perfectly flush with the head itself and the cam on its own, right? Just lock them in place for this procedure. Ideally, this is kind of an important procedure and it would be nice to have a second person to help you out, which Cameraman Dennis over here will be helping me and giving me a hand. Ain't that right? He nodded. No, I didn't. <laughs> when you're putting these on, make sure that it's tight and it's holding up and it's actually in place of the crankshaft and it's holding on properly. All right, pull it up. Make some tension for it. There you go. So this is kind of the most annoying part, putting this chain on so that it would be good down there and it would be perfect perfectly aligned with these teeth because if they're not then this whole timing thing is just it's it just takes a while I'll just say that so you put it on you slide it on kind of wiggle it back and forth until you find itself a seating position really see on already I don't like how this is sitting but who knows we might be in the clear Yeah, it's one, two off. Just like back in the day. Now you spin the pedal and just pop right on. So really you just gotta play around with this chain a little bit. Seat it onto the sprocket. There we go, it's seated. After a lot of messing around, finally got him. Finally got this chain to go on and it's seated nicely, it's so good. Um, if you notice, if you look at this, right? So this, these Vanos gears are seated really nicely. They're seated parallel to the holes, right? These, they're great, they're good. This one's perfect, this one's slightly off to the left. This is cylinder six through 10. I wasn't sure, I redid this like five or six times at this point. I redid it and it would still turn out to be the same way. So I reached out to Troy Giep, shout out Troy Giep. Man, he's been helping me so much. He, I mean, not only did he take care of these Vanos gears and align them for me perfectly, and he told me that those are actually seated perfectly, right? So I can move on with this. Um, if Troy says they're perfect, they're perfect, dude. So yeah, we're gonna be moving on. Also, if you notice, the exhaust gear has a 13 millimeter bolt. Pretty much what it does, they hold these two gears together so that they wouldn't 
move and you know lose their lose their grip of each other again when you have this tool when you have this tool kit right there um, before you take the vanos off in general you want to secure this bolt where it is now that way these gears these two gears they stay put together in the same tension and the spring inside this is keeping that tension together i made the mistake to just pull them off how I did. That caused these gears, the tension, the spring inside this exhaust gear to make these two little gears slide away from each other and they're not, they weren't aligned anymore. So they twisted, the tension inside was released and you're not supposed to get rid of that tension. So thankfully, Troy agreed to put these gears into the correct position and the correct tension inside and put this 13 millimeter bolt inside there to hold that tension together. Uh, I'm gonna be removing this bolt afterwards after we put these Vanos gears on and that's when these bolts are gonna have to be going out So what you want to do next is you take these central bolts um, They hold the gears to the camshafts first of all You want to get new bolts because these are stretch bolts and BMW TIS does recommend to buy new ones If you have to have if you ever have to replace these or remove the Vanos for whatever reason in our case We did so I got new ones the part number on these uh, these central bolts is that 11 36 7 8 36 3 27 that's the part number on these so if you want to go get these go get them but we're going to lubricate these lubricate the thread as well as where the hat is try to lubricate that because that's majority of where the friction happens you take an 18 mil you hand tighten them and then the bmw tis states that you have to torque them down to 20 newton meters and then give it 180 degrees on each bolt. That's a little bit pushing it, so I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is 20 Newton meters and then 90 degrees on each bolt and then go back and do another 90. You know, make it a little bit more even. 20 Newton meters, it's set. Torque them until you hear a little click. There we go, that's the click. There we go, double check. Cool. All right, now we're doing 90 on each and then another 90 degrees. We're gonna zero this thing out. Give it a good old 90 degree. Okay, that one's done. All right, that's 90. Let's give it another 90. And this 90 is a little bit more difficult. Boom. The second round of 90s is a little bit more tough. Uh, okay, 90s done. But this procedure is not done yet. BMW TIS states that if you're using new bolts, which you're supposed to use, again, if you remove the Vanos, you have to get new bolts. If you get new bolts, you do this exact procedure that I just did twice. So you torque it to 20, give it a 90 on each, give it another 90 on each, loosen them completely, do 20, 20, 90, 90 on each. So. That's it, that's the procedure, and after that, those central bolts are locked in. And just like that, after the main central four bolts are locked in and they're torqued down, you can remove these 13 mils. Keep in mind, it's an M8 by 18. It cannot be longer than 18 millimeters. Otherwise, you're just not gonna be able to get it out. This one is fine, there's a lot of room here in clearance. But on this side, see how the hole for the bolt is a little bit lower? Yeah, this is literally like 20 mil in distance, so that's why it has to be 18 mil. If you're doing a build like this, I'd get these brand new. Um, regardless of if you're doing some sort of timing job, get brand new tensioners, brand new washers, because dude, these are actually pretty big roll in these. So put them in here, put them in there, torque them down to 65 newton meters, and that should be it really. It's a 17 mil. Next up, take all these bolts, right? These six bolts that are on here are torqued to 10 newton meters, then loosen them by 90 degrees. You wanna take your gasket, your new gasket, right, for your Vanos. Make sure that these surfaces are all cleaned up on both the Vanos and the actual head itself. Make sure it's all cleaned up and smooth. Retract these guys, fully retract them, like so and make sure you have the correct Vanos unit. Each Vanos unit says which cylinder it's for. So this one is one through five. This is the head we're doing, so this is cylinders one through five. Make sure that it's the correct one. I mean, yeah, you can't mess them up. I am not yet doing anything with these solenoids, not quite yet. I am gonna replace them, so I'll show you how to replace all the rings on them and the O-rings on them a little later. But for now, I'm just setting this Vanos unit and that's gonna be it for a little bit. So you take these, you insert them, and then you fit them in until this cutout fits exactly with these bolts and push them in until they just naturally don't want to go anywhere else just like that 
seated nicely. There should be about an eight, eight millimeter space between the Vanos and the head itself. To secure this in its location, take the two longer bolts of the Vanos. There's a big difference between the two corner ones and the, and the center ones. So these two center ones are gonna be the smaller bolts. These two corner ones are gonna be the longer bolts. So you insert them, just hand tighten until it stops. Make sure that the gasket is seated all good. You take the bolts for these guys. They're, they're not supposed to have any washers or anything on them. So they're just the bolt, they're the screw with the full thread all the way down. You insert them and you tighten them to 10 Newton meters and then release them 90 degrees. If it's not going smooth, don't push it. Just make sure everything's going in nice and easy. Okay, so just hand tighten these two for, for now. You can always rotate this gear over here until the seating until it sits perfectly flush with that hole behind. Nice, so you torque it down to 10, and then you release them to 90, 90 degrees. Just like that. Just like that. Once these two bolts are, f are hand tight, before we tighten it down to the actual head, remove this tool, remove this puck, remove this. Then we're gonna be tightening these two one at a time, half turn each. So half turn, half turn, half turn until it's seated properly all the way down to the head. And then you take your two bottom ones and you just tighten them down and torque it down. Then after that, you take your little torque wrench to set to 10 Newton meters, like so, 10 Newton meters. Every screw you see that has washers and doesn't, tighten it down to 10 Newton meters. The ones that you do tighten, take a little Sharpie or something and just mark it down so that you'd know that you already touched it because for this later process, it's gonna be important. So once these four are locked down to 10 Newton meters, you do the exact same procedure on the other head and then we're gonna be rotating the crank and we're gonna be retightening everything else, so stay tuned. After you mark your bolts, you can take off these timing tools. You can put them aside for now, we're gonna be using them later, but this is what the TIS says, so after you bolt these four down, you can take off the timing tools and put them aside for now. Tighten the four bolts on each side, the visible ones, to 10 Newton meters. Next up is simple, remove this timing pin, put it aside, take a 32 mil and start cranking the engine. And once you get a little bit of a, every bolt you see, just stop cranking and turn it down to another 10 Newton meters. That's done. Mark it. So right now, made enough cranks to the motor. Nothing's touching anything. That's good. So we'll set it to top dead center. You smell that? Burnt oil. Oh, nice. <laughs> you find the little OT find marker. Find and that make sure spot. that Piston one lobes are all pointing upward and not down toward the piston. So now, the way you check timing is you take your tools again and you take your intake cams, right? When it's at true top dead center. E, one through five, that's, that's intake. And if they sit down, this is perfectly flush with the exhaust and this is perfectly flush with the head itself. And then you take the exact same one, but for this side, it's pistons six through 10, slide them down. If it slides down smooth on the cam and sits perfectly on the head, your intakes have perfect timing. But now you need to check your exhaust. Exhaust timing, you can't check on top dead center. If you look at one through five, see? It doesn't go because that's not how timing works on these cars. To check exhaust timing and where it says OT, that's top dead center, you remove this pin and the following location, which is this, is gonna be 39 degrees. So you rotate it to 39 degrees, lock it with the pin. Is it locked? Yes, A1 through five. You take it, and if this sits perfectly flush with the head and the cam, you have perfect timing with your exhaust cams and everything. So, let's check this one now. There we go. We, ladies and gentlemen, have perfect timing on this motor, and I couldn't be happier. 
So is the dock, shop dock. So once everything's working out good, just double check everything, oil everything up. All the cams, oil them up, all the gears, all the chains, just kind of lube them up a little bit and then spin it as much, you know, spin it as many times as you want just to double check that your time is actually good. And keep using those timing tools to double check everything. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much it and that's how you set timing on these v10s it's not too complicated but it's pretty tight make sure to like and subscribe because as you can see there's still a ton of work to do on this motor and we're not done yet dude we're still producing stuff and there's this little sucker over here we're making a rebuild video too so stay tuned stay tuned dude peace